so we were discussing uh, so so far we have discussed the functionality the uh, uh, the functionality of application layer transport layer network layer okay so transport layer it is responsible for moving data from process to process from uh, application to application like the working of registrar from CUIUA campus to registrar Islamic campus okay so the application layer we have different protocols and we will study them one by one uh, for example FTP SMTP HTTP HTTP so in the next chapter we will discuss HTTP protocol in detail okay so then you will come to know that what are the functionality of application layer okay similarly the transport layer we will there are two protocols TCP and UDP so we will discuss them in detail in chapter number three so then you will come to know that how the data is moved uh, from process to process uh, from application to application the network layer it is responsible for moving the data from source machine to destination machine physically from source machine system to destination machine so its responsibility is also to compute the best path okay so in our analogy that uh, the TCS is, uh, is the uh, network layer because the TCS it takes the dead the letter from CUI war campus registrar and it physically move the letter to the uh, deliver the data to the Islamic University registrar okay so uh, so we will discuss IP protocol that is used at the network layer in the internet so it is the uh, working okay and the link layer it is responsible for moving the data from one node to another node from one end of the row, uh, link to another net okay so there are different link uh, protocol available for example ethernet and it is 2.11 wi-fi and point-to-point -point protocol okay the physical layer this layer is responsible for what okay let's me explain it so when the data from the application comes for example the transport layer delivers this data to the network layer the network layer uh, compute the best path for example this is the best path so on this best path the network layer uh, instruct the data link layer that the data should be moved from this node to this node over this link okay now the, when the the link layer it passes the data to the physical layer the physical layer what does it do basically in the computer system the data is stored in bits and on the link <coughs> it supports signals it support signal so the signal can be analog and digital similarly the data it can be stored digital or analog so <coughs> here the bits they are converted into signal so the physical layer functionality is to to convert the zero one data into signal into signal so when and the same is on the sending side the physical layer converts the data into signal and then the signal moves on on the link and it is received so when under it is received so here the physical layer at the receiving node it converts the signal again to data to zero one bits so the physical layer it is responsible to converting the bits in the system to the signal so that it can propagate over the link on the receiving node it receives the signal from the link and it converts back the signal to bits okay so this is done so you can see it through our example here you can see the transport layer it adds header the network layer it adds headers okay so the transport layer what is the header that which application is sending data to which application the application information the process information 
the port numbers okay <coughs> the network layer it also add the header why because it includes that which system is sending to which system ip address of source machine and ip address of destination machine okay the link layer <coughs> it also adds the information that now the data has to move from this to the first router to the switch and from switch to router so when the data is moved from this link from one end of the link to another end of the link so this is the responsibility of link layer link layer okay the network <coughs> layer it will specify that the data has to be moved from this machine to the first router to the first router now the link layer it will decide okay to move the data from this machine to this router there is a switch involved so the link layer will first deliver the data from this end to the switch and then from the switch to the router okay so the switch is working at the layer 2 okay and the end system they have five layers application transport network link and physical layer okay and the router it has only three layers because it there is no uh, the because it is the core network okay so there is physical link and network layer there is no transport and application layer why because the user they sit on the end system to access the internet they don't sit on the router so therefore and the user access the internet through application so the application transport layer they are present in the uh, end system okay so this is the responsibility of link layer that to move the data from this machine to first router so there is a switch so the link layer first deliver the this data from source machine to the first switch and from switch to the router okay and the physical layer it doesn't add any kind of the physical layer it doesn't add any header why because there is no it's functionality is to move the uh, to convert the bits into signal on the sending side and on the receiving side bit converts signal into bits and the switch is working up to two layers so after two layers it's, it receives the data at the physical layer it converts the signal into bits and then the link layer it say okay this data is coming from this machine and it is moving toward this router so it it sends back this and data to this router and this router it, it receives the physical layer it converts the bits the, the signal into bits at the link layer it say okay this data has come to the router so it give this to network layer now the network layer says okay this data is moving from this source machine to the destination machine so it forwards the data to the this destination machine and when it, this destination machine it is received so you can see that at the physical layer it converts the signal to bits at the link layer it say okay the data is for me at the network layer it say okay the data is from source machine to the destination machine and i am the destination machine so it gives to the transport layer transport layer decide that this data is for which application okay so you can see that you can see that when it is received at the link layer okay when the link layer passes the data that it is for me so that it passes to the network layer when it passes to the network layer so it remove its header it remove its header okay now header are only network header and transport layer that from the network header the network layer can understand that this packet is for me so it passes it to the transport layer from transport layer from this header the transport layer can come to know that this data is for which application so only to that application that data is forwarded not to others okay so <coughs> we have discussed the functionalities of each layer okay so i think the functionality of the application layer transport layer network layer link layer and physical layer is clear okay so the link layer is analogy can be like for example when the tcs office they deliver the data from the work campus to stexla so they may come on foot but from the uh, uh, texla to rawalpindi they can move the data by motorcycle motorbike and from rawalpindi to islamic university they can move the data through by car 
okay the physical layer it just is the it, it, its functionality is to convert the bits into signal on the sending side and on the receiving side it converts the signal from back to uh, bits okay so as we have discussed that there are two types of uh, models okay one is the tcp ip one is the osi so the application the functionality of application transport network link layer they are discussed in the osi there are two models uh, there are two other layers one is called presentation and one is called session so what are the their functionality although i have explained to you that this model is no longer used in practice in the internet the internet is used tcp ip model which has five layers okay but we are going to discuss the functionality of this presentation layer the presentation layer it allows application to interpret meaning of data for example encryption compression machine specific conventions and the session layer it is used for synchronization for checking pointing recovery of data exchange so the internet stack uh, that we are using the tcp ip model as we have discussed it here the tcp ip model it has five layers so it doesn't have these two layers presentation and session so the working of these presentation and session they are implemented in the application layer in the tcp ip model okay so the the tcp or the internet stack they are don't have this layer the presentation and session layer so these are now implemented at the application if they are needed so if some application need them then they can this presentation and session layer they can be implemented at the application layer okay so we have discussed it okay so till now we have discussed the tcp ip protocol layers model okay i think it is should be clear to you now we are moving to you know in internet some things are complementary are mandatory so these functionalities they are mandatory now we will study in the uh, we will study in the tcp uh, ip uh, uh, later on uh, we will study uh, that when the internet came in the internet history for example here okay in the internet history uh we will uh study it okay uh in the internet uh when it was invented okay the internet when it was in invented okay when the internet was invented so it was assumed that a group of mutually trusting user attached to transparent network when it was invented first the internet so it was used by researchers some people and it was assumed that these users they are trusted they are cooperating they will not misuse the internet okay so therefore the security it was not in their mind they were assuming that the user are trusting user they are trusting users so the security it was not in the mind when it when the internet was designed for the first time okay so therefore the the only the mandatory services for internet application for internet communication was that these five layers they are necessary they are mandatory they are mandatory so therefore the tcp ip model was designed by only considering these five functionality and what is but later on when it was used in the business and it was now the more people they are using so there is you know we have discussed many advantage of internet 
So what is the disadvantage of internet? The disadvantage of internet is network security. Privacy. Privacy. It is disadvantage. But the network security, there are different network security instances. Let me give you some important recent instances. For example, US election. The recent, the last US election that are conducted, there is some controversies in the US itself. US is a superpower. What is the controversy? The online election, they are hacked. They are hacked. By who? They blame that they are hacked by Russia. And the Russia, they blame, the US blame that the Russia has has helped Trump, has hacked our election system, had helped the, Trump to win. And you can see these things on this article. More recently, in our Pakistan, K Electric struck by ransom. This link is available. It is like, for example, the people they captured other people for ransom. But nowadays, in the internet, it is going on. How it is going on? More recently, in Pakistan, it is reported that the K Electric Company, the Karachi Electricity Company, who is providing electricity to Karachi, someone, the attacker, the hacker, they encrypted the data of K Electric. What does it mean? They, they got, the attacker got, the attackers, they got access to K Electric system through internet and they encrypted all the information of K Electric. So the K Electric has the data, but it is encrypted. They cannot decrypt it. They cannot see it. That what is stopped. <laughs> okay. So the attacker then sends the message to K Electric that if the K Electric wants to decrypt the data, to see the data, so they have to pay. So this is the ransom. Okay. And how they have to pay? They have to pay the money in Bitcoin. That not is traceable. Although it is traceable in the internet. Okay. But it requires expertise. So it is so it is reported. I am not sure, but it is reported that they have paid the ransom and then their data was the the attacker gave them a key and their data is now decrypted again. So, through the data, they have paid the money and the, 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 the K Electric got the data back, but there is a severe possibility, there is a severe uh, uh, problem. What is the problem? The problem is that, that those attackers, they can disclose the data of the K Electric to all the peoples. Okay. So these are the two instances. It shows that how serious is the security issue of internet. Okay. So the internet, it has so much. So the security was not complementary mandatory services when the internet was designed. But nowadays, security is the most important need of internet application. Okay. So, we will discuss network security in detail that how we can achieve network security. But let's uh, describe some definition of network security. What is network security? Okay. So, field of network security, there are bad guys who can attack computer networks. Always. For example, there are thieves who uh, in the real life Okay, they are killers, they people they kill for money. Okay, so how can we defend network against these attacks? Okay, so we have to design architecture so they to avoid such kind of attacks. Like we have policing system, we have intelligence system. 
and the society to avoid the thieving, the killing, etc. So similarly, in the internet, we have network security. So the internet, it's originally when it was a vision, when it was designed, so it was used, it was assumed that it will be used by trusting user. So therefore, they didn't design the internet in security in mind. So therefore, you can see that in the TCP IP model, there is no security. These are the mandatory services. And the security was not mandatory service. It was supplementary. But nowadays, it is complementary. Okay. So, the internet protocol, no, the internet protocol designers, they are catching up. They are now designing new and new protocols to for security to ensure security. Okay. So, now they are using security consultation in all layers. And it is a far, it is a far, uh, it is a forever green field. What does it mean? That all the times the people they are doing research in the network security, but still it needs more and more research in this field. Okay, and still they, it needs more and more research in this field. Okay. So let me explain some of the security issues okay okay so let dis uh, discuss some of the security terms that are used okay because in this chapter we are giving overall view of computer network internet okay the malware okay the malware it can be get into a host from another host via internet for example you are using i'm using this laptop and my laptop is attached to internet so another person the attacker who is in the us it can through internet it can get to my system to my host and they are how they can get there are two ways one is virus what is virus? For example, the virus, it can come to my system. For example, the attacker sends me an email. There is a link or there is a file, whatsoever. And I click on that file or on that link. So it is an executable file. It is an executing file. So when I click on that email, link or a dead file that that file executed when i when i run that file and allow that file to execute and it is installed so the system is installed on my so it that person get there is a program so this virus is a program and it can get whole my information on my system whole information on my system and that information can be sent to anyone else okay for example it can be spyware that all my keyword i my username my passwords my data all these things there can be get to that system or that person can encrypt my data and my system so i cannot access it because when i run this application so whatever is the logic in that application i don't know so therefore when you receive the email or attachment even from your users from your trusted user make to ensure that to see it that what is it it is, is it, it is a trusted or not okay and this virus not only fix my system but this virus may run a logic that it can send such attachment such email to other people's using my system my account informations okay and when they and when the other persons they trust on me and they open that link so they are also infected and that person and they, those are used to infect other persons so and so on so this is called virus but one is called worm what is it maybe on my system a virus is running. I don't know. 
some application is running here I click on the system and get the virus but here the virus can come by itself for example there is a program running in my system I don't know and that program is is allowing other system to access my system so this is called worm so the spyware so whether it is a virus whether it is a worm the spyware is are those application that collects your information your username your password whatever you are typing that all things the log they are collected and they are sent to someone else and one is called dos for example through virus or through worm whatsoever is the application okay so the attacker gets to my system and from my system it is launching attack on other system for example denial of service attack what is it for example it is sending the email the wrong email to other systems okay the spoof email to other systems when you send the spoofed email so there and in the internet we have a system that when the spoof attack is coming for example my ip address is one one but i am sending the data with the ip address for example 200 200 200 and the 200 200 ip address is the ip address of attacker so the isp they will block you that why your ip address is one one and you are sending the data with the ip address 200 200 so this is called spoofing so they block this system so this is called denial of service attack okay so this is denial of service attack example okay this is the denial of service attack that for example the many people okay they select a target this is a target for example this is the google server and the google server is attacked from this system this system this system and this all these system for example if you receive if it is attacked by one system you can block that ip address but it is but it is attacked from many system then you cannot block all the papers okay so this is called denial of service attack for example this is the uh, uh, gmail server so it is attacked by other people and they don't use this gmail but they just attack they just send the request to make this system busy so the other legitimate user when they access the gmail they cannot access because it is already used by other peoples it is overloaded by other peoples so it is not available to the legitimate users this is called denial of service attack okay and they are using the bandwidth of this system because it will not because it is the, this system will have to serve these attackers so it will be busy in this so if the legitimate user comes to access the gmail they cannot access the gmail why because it is already used by other peoples so it has to wait this is called denial of service attack okay another type of attack which is called sniffing which is called sniffing what is it for example you are sending data b is sending data to a you are accessing gmail you are accessing facebook and there is someone else who is listening to you who is getting your data it doesn't disturb your communication between a and b but it just gets the data that what are they talking about it gets your username password this is called sniffing and it is it is passive it can it can get your password user username etc and it is very difficult to detect because you don't know that whom is seeing your communication okay one is called ip spoofing I, as i have discussed to you for example this data c is sending data to a and c is pretending that this data is from source B. C is putting the IP address of B. So when A receives this message, so A says, okay, the message is from B, but it is not from B, it is from C. This is called spoofing, fake addressing. Nowadays, in the internet, when you send the data with the spoofing IP address, the, your ISP, they will block your IP address. When they block your IP address, then you cannot access. So okay, so the some attacker, for example, the people. Okay, this is sent by C, but the C can also 
have a virus in the install a virus in the B and from the B system it sends the data with another IP address for example with the IP address of D okay so when it sends to the, its ISP will block the B why because it is the uh, uh, it is sending spoofing IP address because the IP address is B and it is sending the data with the IP address D so it is okay so these are all these and we will discuss these all whole security attacks in chapter number 8 okay so now to up to now we have finished this chapter we have discussed what is internet internet structure network x end system access network network core packet switching circuit switching network structure isp what is delay loss packet throughput etc protocol layers network security all these things are discussed so this is the overview of whole internet okay and in the rest of the chapters we will discuss each and everything in detail for example application layer application layer protocol it's working and the application protocol that are used in practice we will discuss them one by one similarly in the network layer the transport layer data link layer physical layer and even the network security will be discussed in detail in one chapter okay so now we are going to discuss internet history uh, i would like to suggest you to go through the internet history uh, in the book okay okay so internet it was basically invented by darpa okay and it was called arpanet okay and it was composed of 15 nodes it was used for only research purpose okay but later on there are some revolution in the internet okay uh, when the web was invented website access so the internet was used only for research purpose for for a communication between researchers but when the web http uh, www web it was invented so the web the internet it it was used by commercial people for commercial purpose for business so when it was used for business so it it was getting uh, uh, it was generating revenue so when it was generating more revenue it was used for commercial purpose so when it was used for commercial purpose so it was generating revenue it was generating money so it was generating the revenue so the researcher used that revenue to enhance the internet more to en to enhance the internet for many other applications so that's why the internet when it came from research to commercialization from research to commercialization through the web so now the internet was expanded more application one invented why because the people were getting the money and that money was used by researcher to invent to design new and new applications okay this is the first revolution the second revolution is in that from 1922 that was p2p system what was p2p system the p2p system for example i let me give you an example the hollywood they were invest they were uh, they were investing a uh, million billions of dollars to develop or to uh, for uh, uh, for for example to uh, develop a movie or a song okay and they they were generating the movie industry they were generating the money revenue by launching their movies and cinemas and the people get uh, ticket in the cinema and they were uh, that money the ticket money they were going to the attest to the director of the movies so they were so the movie industry they were generating their revenue their cost of the movies from the tickets on the cinemas okay but the people they record these movies and they were sending these movies freely to other people through the internet by using p2p file sharing 
for example nowadays you are using bit torrent okay so these are the uh, utorrent example so these are the p2p application where you can freelax uh, even nowadays you are you are accessing the microsoft word the microsoft window freely in many countries of the world these are called pirated okay so there so that why it was another revolution that at that time the p2p traffic in the internet it was 80 percent so those moving in uh, those industries that uh, that were uh, developing movies etc song they were hit uh, they, they had uh, faced loss okay so but anyway there is no uh, the uh, ipr is in, is imposed in the intellectual property right is imposed in many countries but it, through the internet you can get freely the movies the file the windows ms office etc etc many softwares okay so now it, it is still used so when it was used p2p so it was used by many people so it expanded the internet and in, and in more okay and nowadays there is another uh, revolution that is called online social networks many people they are using for example twitter it is used by many leaders celebrities okay uh, so from movies uh, industry or from other uh, uh, from even from by politician by the uh, players like for example football player cricket player etc so now it it expanded the size of movie uh, of the internet there are many people they are using internet when the many people are using internet they have to pay when they have to pay so it generates the the, uh, the revenue for the internet industry and when they it generates the internet industry revenue so the more people they are uh, so when uh, the that revenue can be used by researcher to design new and new application to improve the performance of internet more and more okay and nowadays with the with the advent of smartphone tablets mobile phone and the internet on the mobile phone now it is used by uh, so it expanded the internet okay so similarly the video uh, the um, video content search the e-commerce so all these led to the expansion of internet what does it mean that the more people they are using so it generates the revenue it generates the money for the internet industry when it, it generates the money that money can be used by the researcher to develop to enhance the internet more and more and to develop more and more applications okay so in the summary the uh, we have discussed all the uh, overview of the internet so i think by the end of this chapter you should know what is internet okay so we give you just an overview of internet and now we will discuss in detail each aspect of the internet okay so this class is now ends okay